Ah, uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time, or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen mofo, ain't no time to slack, so just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother, just lay down your weapons and pick up another. Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome to my virgin kitchen. Last night I had a dream. I have a dream, you know, kind of like that, but a little bit less intense. Um, you know, sometimes you go to bed and you wake up and thinking, did I have a dream? What, what just happened? Or other times you have a dream and you think, wow, that was weird. This was a flashback, okay? I was six years old and I remember it really well because I was at my friend Matthew's birthday party and I went there and had some food, we had some play and the food in particular, which is why I'm doing this video, was amazing. There was one dessert in particular and it was sort of apple and creamy and yummy and a little bit of chocolate shavings in it and I went up to Matthew's mum, I think it was his mum, or possibly auntie, I do apologise, that's not really important and I said, you know, what is that? And I remember her saying, snowy apple surprise. So, I'm going to try and make today snowy apple surprise. Ingredients are minimal, really quick to make, and hopefully it will taste similar, I'll let you know at the end. But either way, we'll try and make it taste good, yeah? These are all the ingredients you're gonna need. Literally, an apple here, egg white, which I've separated from an egg. The egg yolk has unfortunately gone into the bin, I do apologize. 150 mils of double cream, so you're gonna whip the cream, whip up the egg white separately as well, stir it all in with some cooked apple, and I've got some chocolate shavings there. Now, you know, you don't have to just use that if you wanted to. You can add other stuff you want. Maybe some honeycomb. I was really seriously mulling over adding honeycomb in there. But I'm not gonna. We're just gonna get on it, work on it, see if we can get it to taste the same. I'm gonna start our apple, baby. Apple, apple, apple. Okay, so this should be enough for one. First thing I'm gonna do is start to peel my apple like so. Oh, wow, look at that. See that coming off there? All looking nice and clean and funky. Peel it all the way around, and then I'm gonna core it. If you haven't got one of these funky things that cores it and slices it for you, just use a knife. It's easy, right? Wicked. Okay, cool, so we've given that apple a nice good shave, so I'm just gonna get my core now, sit it over the top, and just push it through, a little bit of pressure on there. Patron, like that, there we go, out comes my core. Now what I think I'm gonna do is cut that up even smaller anyway, so I will use a knife, just to get it nice and small pieces, it'll cook faster. This is the thing that's gonna hold the recipe up, the apple right there. Okay folks, all I've been doing is chopping up my apple segments with a knife. I'm gonna cut it into thirds like that. As you can see, they've gone sort of nice cubey pieces. You don't have to do that. It would just take a little longer, as I say, and you don't really wanna wait around. Nah, we don't wait for apples on this video, no. Okay, so I've just lit my hob right there. I've grabbed myself a saucepan. There's no water in that or anything. And you can probably just see here, I've got some of my apples off shot. What we're gonna do is put all your apples in the pan like so. And by the way, I've got to tell you, I need to thank Sunset Lover on YouTube, cha 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 um, She actually told me how to do like widescreen on my YouTube. So if you're looking at my video and it's gone like that, you've got to thank her for that, because that's pretty cool and I'm, I'm rubbish at, I'm rubbish at YouTube, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna get all the apples in there. I'm going to cook it, a little bit of sugar, and that'll stew it. One way around that, actually, an even quicker and cheaty way, is to buy just a tin of apple pie filling. Exactly the same stuff. A little bit naughty, though. Okay, so there's our flame. Wow, that looks like I'm touching it. I'm actually miles away. Anyhow, our saucepan is there. Let's turn that flame down, actually. Let's get it nice and low. Apples are going to go on there like so. And here, I've got myself a glass of water. I'm going to pour in just a little bit at a time. Probably about a tablespoon initially. Stir it through. We're not going to use all that amount. I'll let you know. In fact, I probably already have. If you hit pause at the start to let you know the eno enough amount to soften those apples, then we'll chuck some sugar in. Yeah. Okay, so you can probably just see at the bottom there, you see that little puddle of water? That is enough for the minute. It's getting nice and warm. It's going to steam these apples and make them nice and soft. So I'm not going to add any more for the minute. If I add any more, I'll let you know. So just keep it on a low heat, stir it a little bit, and it should start to break down gradually. Okay, folks, so just over there, we have got our pan of apples simmering away. If I just turn you around here, wow, I used the tripod then. I've never done it properly like that before. Anyhow, my double cream, just a small packet there. I'm going to put it into, let's put it into this tub here. There we go. Call it a basin then. And that goes in there. And the egg white can go cha -cha into this one. Just going to pour that in like so. And you'll see here we've got our electric whisk behind us. What we're going to do is whisk them up, but obviously don't dip them between the two. You don't want to get it dirty. I want to get this nice and thick and the egg white nice and fluffy and stiff so we can shove it over our head. Let's go for it. Okay, folks, it's only been two minutes, and if you look at those apples, they're beginning to soften slowly. That water has bubbled really fast, and they're hacking into those apples. They're going to break them down, make it all smooth. Yeah, baby. Okay, so I'm going to do my egg whites first. In they go. Yeah. Okay, so that has been about four minutes of electric whisking, and you can see the texture there. It's gone all stiff. I'm going to put it over my head just to make sure. Let's check it. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Check that out. All good. Can you see it? Yeah? Okay, so over the head. Yeah. It's amazing. So clean off your electric whisk and then we'll go work on our cream. Yeah. 
Okay, just before we get to the cream, I want to show you, look at the apples now. That's actually only been 10 minutes in total. There's still some big chunks there to break down, but I added another tablespoon of water, okay? Because you want to make sure you don't burn the pan, keep it nice and movement like that. Look at that apple, loving it. want to dive in there. But what is going to dive in there is a tablespoon of sugar. So you're just going to pour that in. That's normal caster sugar. Stir that through, give it a nice sweet edge. You could even add your sugar to your egg whites if you want. But for me, this recipe is sweet enough. Right, the apples are over there doing their thing. We're gonna grab our clean electric whisk now into the bowl with the cream, whip it up. Right, that has actually only been a minute and we've got this awesome sort of scrambled eggy texture there. It's all nice and thick. Leave it as it is, go put it in the fridge for a bit because you don't want the warmth of the apples to start doing stuff to that. Get it in the fridge, nice, thick, scrambled eggy green, baby. Yeah, baby. Okay, folks, I just want to show you. Look at the apples. It's all nice and smooth now. That has been on there for around about 25 minutes. There's still the odd lump in there. You can break it down if you want like that. We'll get a potato masher, but I'm going to have a little bit of texture in there. I'm probably not going to use all that apple, if I'm honest, anyway. So I'm taking it off the heat. I'm going to put it up there out the way to cool down in the pan, and then we're going to chuck other stuff in there to join it. Yeah. Okay, folks, our saucepan of apple has completely cooled down. Look, I can even touch the bottom of it. That is how cool it is. You are so cool right now. I'm going to make it even cooler. One thing I'm going to do with it being apple, I'm going to add a cheeky cinnamon kick. Just a pinch of cinnamon. I don't think that was in the original one, but that's what I want to do. And this is my cooking video. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, cinnamon, cha ching in there. Let's just stir it through. We're going to add our other ingredients in as well. So some of our chocolate's going to go in. Our cream is going to go in. And also, our egg white. So it's all going to go in. It's all going to go in. Okay, so the cinnamon's in there, it's all good. It's turned it slightly browny, which is all good, doesn't matter. We've got our cream here, let's just grab that, just spoon it all in like so, straight in there, wow. And we're gonna use that same spatula, just to fold it in, work it all through. Bit of white on apple browniness going on. Goodness gracious me. Oh wow. Okay, so with our cream stirred through, you can actually see why this sort of snowy name comes because you've got the, the lumps in it. That's not actually the apple. That's a little bits of cream when it's joined the apple there. You taste it and it's like, ooh, that is a cool texture. That texture is going to get even more of a pajage when we chuck in our egg whites, which are right here. If I had more than one egg, I'd probably add them in gradually, but I'm just going to whop these straight in together. See it straight in there. You see that? Can you see it like there? And what we're going to do is just fold it in two. Just work it all in. Nice bit of air bubbles in there. Make it some sort of funky, light and fluffy thing going on right there. And the last thing to chuck in with it is just a sprinkling of our chocolate. So keep working this through. Wow. Okay, so it's been about five minutes of total folding in, and I'm just loving watching the transition there. It's gone to this like real sort of foamy texture. You probably can't see it too well right now. You need to be in the kitchen with me. You want to be right here with me right now? Like that weirdo that emailed me and said, can I come to your kitchen? That ain't going to happen, but you can try this. Let's see for yourself what it's like. Okay, cool. So, just a teeny weeny pinch of our grated chocolate. The rest is for decoration. I'm just gonna sprinkle that in. It's important that your pan isn't hot, obviously, because the chocolate will melt through. You still want that teeny bit of texture, okay? So it's gonna be sort of snow and chocolate. I remember that so well. Okay, stir this through as well. Right, yo, so our chocolate has all been stirred through like that. It's all light and foamy and funky. The chocolate, this is what you want to happen. You want to bite into it and go, ooh, like that. The snow feel It's going to just ooze down. It's going to be all foamy and light. And that chocolate, you didn't want it to melt because you just want that little, uh, that little, uh, you know, with the chocolate, just that little firmness to remind you there's chocolate in there, baby. And I know the phrase, don't eat yellow snow. Well, one way around this, you could chuck some yellow food coloring in there right now. Don't do that, but you could, and then you would be eating yellow snow. So, what we're going to do is get it out of there, put it into some flashy sort of serving glasses like this, sprinkle some more chocolate on top, refrigerate it for about 20 minutes, maybe even an hour, maybe overnight, completely up to you. And then I'm going to eat it, okay? That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so here's my funky serving glass. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little chocolate layer, I'm going to fill it up a little bit, some more chocolate layer, fill it up, chocolate on the top. I still can't get over what an amazing use of apples this is. So easy. All right, so just a sprinkling of chocolate at the bottom, like a chocolate base. Base, base, wicked base, base. And I'm just going to push in the mixture like so. Wow. This is going to sit on top. It's so light and foamy and gorgeous. I'm just going to let it find its way, like level off. It should, should do that eventually. Gravity, help me, gravity. Okay, gravity finally helped me. Sprinkling the chocolate on top again. Not too much, not too little. Just enough to coat it all the way around. Loving it. Okay, and then we top it up like so. Wow, look at it, it just sits. It's so light, it's just going to sit on that chocolate. It's not going to force it down. This is going to be enough just for one. Amazing. There we go then. Wow, excuse the mess around there and the chocolatey fingers, but we need to add some more chocolate on there. So just a final top in. Remember the chocolate, you don't have to use it. That was just what they had at the party I went to. In fact, it didn't actually look this flash, but it was blooming good. Oh wow, there's a big chunk there. I'm just going to eat that right now. You could use honeycomb. I think honeycomb would go really well with this, but let's just go put this in the fridge now. 20 minutes, nice and quick, and then I'm going to eat it. Wicked. 
Okay guys, it's been 20 minutes. I've just got out of the fridge and getting my spoon right in and out. I just can't wait. I'm going to go right for this right now. Here we go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Mmm. Oh my god. That is so, so good. Potentially a little bit better than when I first tried it when I was six years old. I don't know, but I can taste a little cinnamon kitchen in there. Kitch? Kitchen? Cinnamon kick in there. I'm digging it. I'm loving it. Wow, it's cool. One other thing you could do once it's super chilled, you could put it with some ice cream. Get a blob of ice cream, spoon this over the top. That would be good. That would be good. So many things you could do with this. So many ways you can make it your own. Have a little go. Let me know how you get on. I'll see you again next time. Cheers then. Love ya.